Well, hello there, everyone. I'm Kay, and I live on a Tennessee homestead, and I want to talk to you today about my Buck Stove 91, so stay tuned. Well, my story with stoves begins in this house. This is the first time I've had a wood stove that I have been responsible for and had to build my own fires. In California, I had a house for 25 years, but it's California and you really don't need to burn wood heat, but the house was built in the 80s, I think, and so it did have a fireplace which you could burn wood and it also had a gas jet, which is kind of cheating because it's so easy to build a fire when you have a gas jet. Now, an open hearth fireplace is not going to give you the heat that a wood stove will. I have an insert. You're going to get more heat if you have a freestanding stove, but that's not what came with this house. When I was looking for a house, one of my requisites was a wood stove. I knew I wanted to come to the country and have a larger property. After living cramped in the city for so many years, noisy, cramped cities, and I wanted peace and quiet and some space around me, and I wanted to be as self-sufficient as possible. I do have a heater, of course. The house was built on this property in 1988, and it also has a cistern that was another requisite in looking for a property to be self-sustaining, self-sufficient, was to have a water source, and it has a really great downspout uh, system catchment system off of the house that goes into a large cistern, 10,000 gallons. I've had some problems with that, but that's another story. Today we're talking about the Buck Stove 91. Now I gather from the man who redid, refaced my whole fireplace. That's the first big thing I did when I came here. I didn't like the way the brick looked and the way it had been designed and so I had him expand the mantle, expand the whole fireplace and cover it with beautiful rock. But I know from that experience when he worked on this on the fireplace the stove had to be moved so that is a whopping 620 pound big boy, big bad boy. <laughs> so you're gonna need some real manpower to move that thing. Now it doesn't have the freestanding legs because it is tucked into the existing fireplace. First of all I just want to talk about the fact that this is an American made stove. The company aspires to be American made and higher local and they're a company that, that's been in business for a long time in North Carolina, and they have great customer service. When the chimney sweep was here, I, I pointed out that I have a loose, the handle was loose, and this could have been a pre-existing condition when I first came. I just didn't know about stoves when I first came, and I was just learning, and it one point, you know, I noticed that the handle was getting looser and looser, and one night the whole thing flew off with the bushing and the handle and the, the thing in the back, and it holds it on, and I'm going, well, did I pick up all the pieces? And evidently, there was a set screw in there that holds the whole thing together, and that didn't get put back. I keep tightening it and so forth, and so when the chimney sweep was here, he said, well, you could probably call the company and they would send you the correct set screw because, you know, if I go down to the hardware store with a handle, I mean, I don't know the, the correct size of set screw to ask for. So I called them up and they said, hey, Jean, she, she goes, hey, Jean, can we just send a set screw to, you know, Kay and, and I told her my name. She said, yeah, sure, just get her address. So they're going to send me the, the correct set screw, and then this thing will be perfect. Let me tell you about the stove. You're going to need a 50 by 54 inch pad to set this baby on. You can put a log that is 22 inches long. You can put that in straight in, and a 23 inch log 
from side to side. So you've got a big box in there. It has its own ash drawer compartment. I'm going to show you all these things. And its own blower. And it has a catalytic converter. She told me this morning that, obviously, I said, can you tell me when they started making the Buck Stove 91? She goes, hey, Gene, when did we start making that? And he goes, 91. I'm going, oh, well, obviously. <laughs> they started making this model in 91. Now, I happen to know, because the man just lives down the road and he came over here, the man who built this house, they had a growing family and it, the layout of the house wasn't the perfect setup for them. And so they moved, I think they moved uh, in 90 or 91 and built another house. And so I'm assuming the new owners who stayed here for decades uh, are the ones that purchased this stove. And they probably bought it in 91. However, I don't know. It does look a little bit, it, it just has a little bit more old fashioned look than the ones you'll see on the website today. But I encourage you to go to buckstove.com or you can just do a search online for buckstove91 and you'll come right up to them. If you're looking, to get a homestead, you really want to make the move, you really want to be self-sufficient, I will say that you're going to have better heat in, in the whole house if you have a freestanding stove, which means your hearth comes out into the room. Mine's not like that. Mine is like this. And so I did buy these fans. These fans, uh, they conduct heat up through the base and then once it reaches a certain temperature, then this starts to go. And it does move a little bit of air into the room and it has more opportunity to get more heat through those blades if they're setting farther back. I found these particular fans on Amazon and it is a Canadian company. And so I wanna give you a closer look at the stove. I just have but spent a couple of years now, a couple of winters, um, building my own fires and experiencing the, the absolutely fabulous heat. I do have a routine of putting a vertical pot. There's not a lot of room here because there's not, you know, a lot of room to set anything on top. So I have a, a skinny metal stainless steel pot that I set there with water uh, because it's just nice to have a little bit more humidity going in the in the air when you're burning a fire. I use uh, fat wood. That's heavy. This is about two-thirds full right now and it has really beautiful pictures um, that are imprinted of various national parks. And since I'm in Tennessee and I had some of my formative <laughs> experiences when I was young in the Smokies, this is the one I wanted. I wanted to point out to you a video that I did last year. I did a series of videos about survival challenge and and I just wanted to see what it would be like. It was very cold, snow on the ground and I turned off the heater. I do have natural gas and so I decided to get a whole house backup generator. Now if the grid goes down completely <laughs> and the electricity stops, the electricity will affect the water pumps and the gas pumps getting water and gas up here. So that's why I wanted to try to think of everything. But I have my stove and that's going to keep me nice and warm. In fact, the, the first month I was here I had no furniture and I slept right here on a camping cot and a sleeping bag until I got my, until the furniture <laughs> arrived. So I did a video last winter as part of a survival challenge playlist and I turned off the power and I actually cooked in my stove. I know it's not set up for that, but you can. You have to be careful, but you can, and I did. And you can see all that in that video and I'll put the link right up there. So let's take a closer look at the Buck Stove 91. It has a really large glass door, which is great. There's the hole for the set screw, which is currently missing. <laughs> and you can see that it has a huge box. Uh, here's your choke. I've already got my hands black. And there's your 
also your vents on the side and these you're going to have out when you start to build a fire. This is the catalytic converter. What it basically means is it has this box up here and the gases when the when the fire gets to a certain temperature it burns off the gases and you have less smoke. Okay, I put a little lantern in there so you could get a better look. And there's the catalytic converter up there. This drops out for the ash and you can just sweep all the ash right here and it'll drop down into the tray. But you can see it pulls quite a lot. It's actually the full length of it, so this is it's going to hold a lot of ash. I saw a technique for starting a fire. Of course, you're not always going to want to be this patient. <laughs> but this is a really cool, sort of surefire way to get a fire burning good. To build a little log house like that. And then I'm going to mix in, this is the fat wood. Which, you know, they just coat these wood pieces, the sort of uniform wood pieces with like a, um, maybe it's a wax or it's, it's just something to, uh, it smells really good just to get the fire going. I keep this throughout the year. These are toilet paper and paper towel rolls. I used to take a newspaper for decades and I don't get a newspaper anymore. But I have, I collect the lint from my dryer. And you can use this for starting fires. I don't need that much. That's a really big one. And you can put that in the middle. pieces. Sometimes it's easier, I found, to just start your fat wood outside of the fire. Now I've got all my choke and my vent, side vents open. Just wave this around in case there's a downdraft already in here. There's no wind today and it's not that cold outside, so it should be okay. That little house just kind of makes a nice. Now, if I wasn't showing you this, I'd. I'd want to have this closed. Let's do close that. I don't want any sparks coming out. That's getting pretty wild. I'm just going to wait for our first coals and then I'm going to add some more larger pieces, like so. Another feature of this Buck Stove 91 Buck Stove is the fan. So there is an electric cord that goes down to an outlet, and let's see, yeah that's really blowing. <laughs> I just wanted to point out one thing I really like about the stove is you have these side panels. That's especially nice if you have furniture, you know, where people sit and they can see in from the side. 
It's just really pretty. I love my buck stove. You can also order the door and the, the side frames in silver or gold for a fancier look. Hey, if growing, cooking, and preserving your own food and living a more sustainable life interests you, I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. Scroll down and click all so you won't miss an episode. Thanks so much for watching. God bless you. And let me know if you try your own Buck Stove 91 or your experiences with your own stove. I'm sure it would be helpful to others reading the comments. Thanks so much and I'll see you next time.